Hi guys, Coach RJ here and welcome to our new episode of RJ's Math and Science Workshop where we learn as one and we learn with fun. So, it's a nice day today guys. Malamig ang panahon, malamig ang simoy ng hangits because it's almost Christmas. And now, we are now open for new learning in our integral calculus sessions. So, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell button for more notifications and share to the others guys. So, stay tuned and have a great day. So for the past topics guys, we are already doing our applications of indefinite integrals. So we did our per first part which talks about the, uh, the geometric applications in which we talked about functions. We solved the function given a derivative. So baliktad yung ating, ating positioning. And now, we will talk about the physical applications. So ano tong physical applications? As I've said in the past video, we will use laws of physics to solve for the physical applications using the indefinite integral. So, we will apply integral calculus in some points na. Do you think na it is a novel method to solve motion in a straight line, uh, a distance of a particle or a velocity of a particle? It depends. Okay? So, we will recall our kinematic equations in our physics and Always remember that our acceleration here is constant, okay? To use that kinematic equations when you recall your physics. Then, in a free fall cases, we will use 32 feet per square second in the sense that mas madali siyang isolve without using calculator. Kung gagamit tayo ng, if we will use 9.8 meters per square second, another constant for the gravi uh, acceleration due to gravity, it will still be correct, pero ibang conversion siya. So, for the most of our problems, we will use feet per square second, okay? So, let's flash our first problem. So, before we solve this problem, guys, let us remind of our format of our answers. We still do given, we still do required, and we still do solution to the answer, okay? So, kailangan natin siya, guys, para ma-organize yung ating solution and to help you guide, okay? So, for the first problem, we are given an acceleration equation at any time t as a is equal to 60. And we are also given an initial value, which is the velocity at rest or velocity at zero. So, take note of that word, ha? When it is at rest, you always start at zero. So, the velocity at rest is 16 meters per second. Then, if your uh, S of zero, when you say S of zero, that is your distance, okay? That denotes the distance. Is 12 meters at rest also. You will find the displacement and the velocity function at any time t, okay? So this is our required. First is the velocity function at any time t and the distance function or the displacement function kasi nagamit tayo ng acceleration this is velocity and expect this is a displacement okay to be parallel on a law of physics in which if all the terms are vector then vector lang dapat ang gamitin natin para mas madali kasi sa mag distance scalar kasi in distance so s is equal to the function of t so for this solution Let's first start with the acceleration function. And if you recall the acceleration function, it is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So therefore, I can substitute this one as dv over dt is equal to 60. Then, we will do variable separable differential equation. So it will leave us dv is equal to 60 dt. Integrating both sides, this will have v is equal to 3t squared plus c. And given your initial condition as v of 0 is equal to 16, then we will substitute 16 for our velocity. And for the time is 0, so we will cancel. So our value of c is 16. So therefore, our velocity function is 3t squared plus 16. Okay? So this is our final answer for letter A. How about for letter B? If we will continue our uh, solution, Let's label this 
uh, constant as C sub 1? It's because ibang constant po yung ating gagamitin per solution. So, pag ibang constant ang gagamitin natin per solution, hindi pwede sila mag-equal. Ito na, C tayo, tas C tayo sa second one. It will break the principle of the equality. So, therefore, we will use this velocity function muna to find the displacement function. So, for the velocity function, we have V is equal to 3T squared plus 16. And we know in the differential calculus that, or even in physics, that the velocity is the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So, therefore, this is ds over dt is equal to 3t squared plus 16. And, variable separable na naman, so this will result to ds is equal to quantity 3t squared plus 16 dt. And this is the integral sign. And this will result us into s is equal to t cubed plus 16t plus c. And we have the initial condition of at rest, your displacement will be 12 meters. So we will substitute 0 at t and 12 at s. So this becomes 12. This is cancelled, this is cancelled. So the remaining letter is c. So our constant is 12. So therefore, the displacement function is s of t is equal to t raised to 3 or t cubed plus 16t plus 12. Therefore, this is our displacement function. So, it is really easy, guys, no? When we recall our displacement functions, uh, acceleration functions, and velocity function, it will boost our solving methods, okay? So, let's look for our second problem. So, for our last problem, it is stated that uh, familiar problem kasi it's because it is thrown vertically upward. So, therefore, we are pertaining to a free fall motion, okay? So, um, lots of terms that will be discussed here. So, given first, we read first the first line in which the body is thrown vertically upward from the ground. So, when we say from the ground, alam na natin, meron tayong keyword dyan. And that pertains to, as the body started from rest or from the ground, therefore its displacement is 0 foot, okay? As initially started at or 96 feet per second, okay? So, it start at 96 feet per second. The next, it is um, given that since it is involving free fall motion, since the body was thrown vertically upward, it will obviously fall down because of the uh, gravity naman, di ba? And its constant is pertaining to negative 32 feet per square second. Okay? So, yun yung ating ibig sabihin pa lang when we read between the lines to our problems. Okay? Because it is important to see the implied given in the sense that word yan eh, pero merong given. For example, from rest. So, therefore, it is expected that there's a zero or the time is zero. Or from the ground, expected that your distance or your displacement is zero kasi from the ground. Okay? So, we are required to find maximum height attained by the body when it is thrown vertically upward. So, how we are going to do with this one? You take note of this constant. This is the constant that we will be using. Therefore, this is the acceleration function. And when you recall, this case will be dv over dt is equal to negative 32. Then, we separate variables. dv is equal to negative 32 dt. We take integration and we get v is equal to negative 32 t plus c sub 1. Bakit c sub 1? It's because marami pa tayong kukunin na constants. So, there's an initial case here that v of 0 is 96 feet per second. Therefore, we substitute values. So, 96 is equal to negative 32 times 0 plus c sub 1. This cancels, so therefore, 96 is our first constant. Completing the velocity function as v is equal to negative 32 t plus 96. We will um, put it later muna yan dyan. So that we will use this equation to find the value later. Meron tayong hanapin na value. So now we will use muna this one to get the displacement function. So, to get the displacement function, we will replace this velocity as the derivative of the displacement with respect to time 
is equal to negative 32t plus 96. Then you separate the variables, this becomes negative 32t plus 96dt. We integrate so that it will become s is equal to negative 16t squared plus 96t plus c sub 2. Okay? Then we have our initial case. So our initial case here is 0 at s of 0 is equal to 0. So therefore, our s here is 0 na malahat yan. Therefore, our constant here is 0. Completing the velocity function as negative 16t squared plus 96t. Okay. So now, paano natin malalaman ang value ng s max? We will first discover the tract of that body. Since you will observe that the velocity at the maximum height is equal to 0 foot per second. Okay? So we have now this value. Then we can substitute it in our velocity function. So this becomes 0 is equal to negative 32t plus 96. It transfer this one. This becomes negative 96 is equal to negative 32t. And to simplify, t is equal to 3. You substitute 3 here. So that it will become S is equal to 144 feet. So this is the maximum height attained by the body if it starts at 96 feet per second from the ground. Okay? So, yun lang yung problems guys. And if you have confusions, just chat there. Or just comment in the comment sections. Feel free. Okay? We will answer that one. So to further practice, to further enhance the skills of solving, let's have these examples. Thank you so much guys for watching my video so subscribe to my youtube channel for more updates and click the bell button for more notifications and share to the others guys especially those who are preparing for the summative assessments preparing for the advanced classes preparing for their um, study habits it depends on how you prepare basta watch guys and shout out nga pala kay mr daniel ray rufule because of one of the creators of our backgrounds in our RJ's Math and Science Workshop. Thank you so much, Den, and sana makita tayo soon. Stay safe there. And for the viewers there, guys, um, thank you so much, guys. See you for the next video. Have a great day. Bye.